lifting exercise. For beginners, there's a free skating lesson every Tuesday and Thursday. Ice Station, across the street from Valencia High. Call 775-8686 or check icestation.net for ice skating fun. The Santa Clarita Artists Association has a new gallery in downtown Newhall on 6th Street between Main and Railroad, right across from the Canyon Theater Guild. The gallery features our members' paintings, sculptures, and one-of-a-kind handcrafted gift items. Whether you're an art lover, buyer, or an artist wishing to join, visit our website at santaclaritaartist.org, come to our free monthly meetings at Barnes & Noble, or stop by the gallery. For upcoming events and exhibits, check us out at santaclaritaartist.org. We make visual art visible. Your hometown station. KHTS is your official Santa Clarita Dodger station. You can catch all evening games right here on your hometown station. For all the latest news and updates on your Los Angeles Dodgers, KHTS has you covered. Go to hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. With the safe disposal of waste from our homes in the Santa Clarita Valley, Chiquita Canyon Landfill is able to create enough green energy to power 10,000 homes each year. So you can feel good that the waste from your home in the SCV is helping create a clean energy source and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Chiquita Canyon Landfill is our partner in sustainable living. Chiquita Canyon is helping lead the way to a greener future. Hey there, I'm Tori with your hometown station weather. Triple digits are back. An excessive heat warning is in effect most of the week. Today, sunny skies in a high of 107, 109 for Tuesday and Wednesday. For all that's going on in the Santa Clarita Valley, check us out on social media. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram or download the free app or just go to hometownstation.com. The magic of the Christmas season comes to life on stage with Santa Clarita Ballet's production of The Nutcracker. This captivating and thoroughly entertaining holiday classic performed by Santa Clarita Ballet features characters that delight audiences. Travel with Mary and her Nutcracker to the Land of Sweets where she meets the Sugar Plum Fairy. Performances run Saturday, December 16th through Sunday, December 17th at Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center at COC. Call 251-0366 or visit santaclaritaballet.net. Good afternoon, Santa Clarita. This is Jesus Hanau of Lilla Commercial, and welcome to the Commercial Hour. Be in the know, know your city. If you're thinking about owning or selling an apartment, industrial building, shopping center, you're in the right place. We talk commercial real estate. Put on your jersey, sweatband, and get in the game. We're here every Monday from 12 to 1 on KHTS AM 1220, FM 98.1. Well, well, it's good, it's good to be back uh, after three weeks of vacation. Uh, we're in Peru and let me tell you, real estate is very different there than it is here. And, uh, I can tell you one thing is we live in the greatest country on earth <laughs> after being outside, uh, of the country. Uh, today we have, uh, in, in studio, uh, a little bit later on, uh, Tony Phillips of, uh, downstream exchange. We're going to talk 1031. We've talked about it before and, um, we're going to talk about it a little bit more in depth today. But I uh, just want to c- cover today on some deals that are happening around town. One big one that, uh, that I want to bring to everybody's attention is uh, a 12.6-acre site, mixed use, right in the heart of, uh, of uh, Santa Clarita on Valencia Boulevard and Bouquet Canyon. It is the former Kmart location uh, where the McDonald's is and the Taco Bell. And they have a pretty good buffet there as well. It's not too bad. Um, but this place in the dollar, I think it's a dollar general that's there, a dollar tree, but this place is for sale and this is a good opportunity for a developer out there. So maybe some of the ones that have, uh, come into our show to pick up this site, put some nice multifamily there, some mixed use. And, uh, with the price at the moment is undisclosed. I'm thinking, uh, off the top of my head, just doing some quick numbers, probably somewhere between 15 and 20 million. So nice site to pick up for development. Uh, some of the leases, the tenants will be out, I think, within the next four or five years. It gives us time to do the architecture work, the planning, get the city on board, 
and do something really nice for the city of Santa Clarita in a great location. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, if you're interested in uh, owning uh, prime real estate and you're a developer, want to know more, please give me a call. You can uh, contact me at 661-298-5487. Once again, 661-298-5487. In addition to that, you can find me on the web at laolacommercial.com. Once again, laolacommercial.com. And uh, we just updated the website, so make sure to check that out. It's really nice. And, um, you know, send me, shoot me an email. All right. Uh, let's move on to uh, my guest that I have in studio today. Um, Tony Phillips of Downstream Exchange, and I'm excited to have him on the show because just to give you a little bit of background on Tony, he's the president of Downstream Exchange. He's also a partner in a certified public accounting firm uh, called Phillips & Company. He received a Bachelor of Science uh, degree from Drexel University in Philadelphia, and here's the best part. He holds two master's degrees from my alma mater, University of Southern California. Awesome. Fight on. Business administration and finance and business in taxation. So you need to know, you need a, a tax advice. This is the place to call. Second, uh, uh, Tony spends most of his time answering complex 1031 exchange questions as, as well as related tax law questions. He also assists exchangers and professional advisors uh, at, when they prepare uh, as tax preparers. He's a certified public accountant. He's also associated with uh, attorneys, realtors, and escrow officers in structuring 1031 exchange. He reviews 1031 exchange documents, and again, like I said, he is a CPA. So uh, Tony has bailed me out of some complex uh, deals, and this is the go-to guy. Welcome, Tony. Thank you for coming on the show. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. I really appreciate it. Did I miss anything on that opening dialogue? No, it was quite extensive. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I want to make sure, you know, this, uh, we have well-qualified people on the show, so um, I highly recommend, Tony, if you're thinking about uh, 1031. So let's talk about this. Uh, how did you get involved with 1031 exchanges? Uh, actually, it was back in 1979. Uh, yeah, 79, when uh, 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 there was a change in the tax law. And basically, uh, yeah, they had an increase in the tax rate. And um, the 1031, although it's been around since 1922, uh, they increased the rate of capital gains. And uh, we saw an opportunity, and uh, we decided to uh, enter into the, uh, uh, the accommodator business. And at that time, uh, we had to basically explain to escrow, bro brokers, clients, uh, uh, lawyers uh, as to what we were trying to do, what we were trying to accomplish. And uh, it was it was kind of a struggle back then. Uh, it was like our phone call each time we talked to somebody. Really? But now, you know, we've been in the business, I don't know how many years, uh, close to 40 years, and um, people do it automatically. They understand it. Uh, a lot of people uh, do it, uh, and the people who aren't doing it are just missing out. What, why, why do you do it? I mean, we have people out there listening to the show that maybe this is the first time they've heard of 1031 Exchange or they heard me talk about it a little bit. Why, why do people do it? Okay. 1031 Exchange, uh, that's a very narrow area of the tax code. It's one section. And what that one section allows you to do, if you do everything right, um, to sell a piece of real estate, investment real estate, buy another piece of real estate, investment real estate and never pay the tax. I mean, everybody wants that. Everybody wants to make as much money as they possibly can and pay no tax. So that's what t Section 1031 allows you to do. It allows you to you know, sell a piece of real estate, investment real estate, uh, buy another piece of real estate, and uh, not pay any tax. Now, unfortunately, um, that area of the code is kind of very restrictive and very difficult to understand. Uh, what happens is uh, anytime the IRS or federal government gives you anything, they make you adhere to the absolute letter of the law. And unfortunately, you can't just read the law. Uh, what you have to do is you have to uh, read the court cases, read the revenue rulings, read the uh, regulations, read rev procs, and, and read all this stuff to kind of get an idea of what they want you to do. And, uh, uh, of course, you know, we read everything you can read about it, 
and uh, we think we understand it, although uh, ever so often something comes into our office that says, gee, we've never seen one of these before. But uh, that's basically what 1031 does for you. It allows you to sell a piece of real estate, buy another piece of real estate, pay no tax. Great, great. Once again, we have in studio today Tony Phillips with Downstream Exchange. Great, great information. Um, now, we say pay no tax. Well, let me ask you this. The cap, we talked a little bit about capital gains. How has that changed from 1979 until now? Has it gone up, down? Where are we at today? I know there's been some laws and changes. How does it, how does it look now? Um, it's, it's kind of bounced around a little bit. I back, back in 1979, uh, effectively, the rate was uh, 20%. Uh, then uh, uh, various, tax, uh, various uh, administrations uh, pushed it down to 15%. Uh, then, uh, let's see what happened then. Uh, uh, then there was uh, the recapture rate at 25%. Uh, and then, let's see, then I think right now it's 0, 15, and f 20%. So that's the current uh, scheme that we're under. Uh, and um, uh, in order to be in a 20% bracket, you have to have uh, you know, adjusted gross income of about uh, – or taxable income of about uh, $400,000. Know, so. Got it. So I just did a quick calculation for our listeners. Um, if I sold a $5 million property and um, my tax on that sale would be about a million bucks, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money to give Uncle Sam. Definitely. So this is the you – know, if you're listening, this is – if you have – holding on that type of real estate – you exact. You need to know this because yes. I don't want to give anybody. I don't even want to give my kids a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now I, I did say uh, you know you know kind of not pay the tax, but mm -hmm. uh, the really technical term is it's deferred. Deferred. Uh, yes. So you, you're deferring into the next property, but uh, most people when they get into 1031 exchanges, uh, they realize the benefits and uh, they continue to exchange and exchange and exchange. I've seen uh, some people, what are we up to, 25 different exchanges. Uh, so wow. people really do this. And uh, the only the one thing that uh, happens is uh, you have a tremendous tax savings uh, when you die. Now, it's a little rugged tax planning, but uh, when you pass away, you get a step up in bases in all your assets. So as a consequence, I mean, you can exchange, 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 you know, die. Uh, heirs get a step up in tax bases. And there's no tax to pay. So the saying is, so there's really um, something to the saying of exchange, 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 until you get to death and taxes. Death. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's really interesting. Uh, you know, the, the government's really been kind of cooperating. Uh, first thing they did, of course, was allow us to continue to do uh, uh, Section 1031 exchanges in the new tax law. Uh, but the second thing uh, they've done is they've raised the exemption for uh, estate tax. Mm -hmm. And uh, the latest raise is, uh, what's it, 10500000 I think, yeah, uh, or thereabouts. So it's a substantial, uh, it's a substantial uh, kind of scheme that's uh, existing in the United States that uh, everybody should really kind of take advantage of. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I, I look at it this way. I've worked so hard. And you have people, I'm sure you work with, uh, work with many different people, but there's this small guy that came over to this country, bought his little house. He said, okay, and bought another house. And then he started exchanging that into an apartment building, a shopping center. Next thing you know, this guy has $50, $60 million worth of real estate. And then, you know, you sell it and you get tax. I mean, all that hard work and investment and – we just did a quick calculation that 20%, uh, that's a lot of money. Let me ask you this. That's the federal. What about state? Does the state have anything to do on there when you sell? Can we, like in the $5 million example, we have the federal a million if I wanted to cash out. But does the state put any other tax burden on you? Yes, the state, of course, has a, uh, a taxing scheme. Uh, but the income from uh, uh, exchanges are considered you know, just ordinary income. And uh, their taxing scheme goes from uh, uh, from 11.3 down to you know zero, I guess. Um, so they, they have their own taxing scheme. So uh, when you do this, you got to add on another uh, you know 10 percent roughly for the state. So we're talking now uh, 30 percent. You got it in taxes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. 
So um, if you're paying the tax, um, you know, you need to call us. <laughs> yeah. And the interesting thing mm -hmm. is, I mean, the, the situation you described is, uh, is common here in the United States. You have a, a guy that comes from whatever country, uh, buys his own house, uh, buys another house, moves to that, you know, buys another house, moves, and buys another piece of property, and then he's into a, you know, six-unit apartment house, and then he gets to, uh, you know, some commercial property, uh, you know, may buy an office building. I mean, that scenario has happened over and over and over again. I remember some guy, um, uh, his job was cleaning out backyards. That's all he did. And uh, he uh, amassed a, a real estate uh, net worth of about 20 million, I think. Uh, went back to his town, uh, his little town outside of Jackson, Mississippi. And in order to do the exchange, he basically bought up three quarters of the town. And wow. I think it's just the American dream. I just love the. I just love yeah. to see that happen. Yeah. And we, you know, we use the example of the guy with a house, but how about the uh, the mechanic who buys mm -hmm. his first uh, auto base, mm -hmm. and then he sells it, yep. and then what do I do with the money? He, you know, he starts looking. He's talk. He talks to his accountant. He says, "Shoot, thirty percent. I don't want to do that." Yep. Now he's in that position to say, well, "Maybe I buy a little retail center, or let me buy an apartment building." Mm -hmm. And then he gets. So you know, I have a, a great example, a gentleman that I'm doing actually business with now um we're under contract on uh about three million dollars worth of real estate in in uh in uh, palmdale and this guy came over from india engineer bought a house the real estate guy shows up he's got a big fat pinky ring gold and he's driving a mercedes and he says what are you doing i'm an engineer for crying out loud and look at this car i don't drive that car yeah and he told him well it's magic of real estate so he told him about it well this guy started buying homes 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 and then it moved to apartment buildings and shopping centers, building industrial. Now the guy is has about 600 apartment buildings, over 15,000 units. Came over as an engineer, living the American dream. Yep, definitely. And we have that right here in Santa Clarita also. Okay, perfect. Once again, I have uh, 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 Tony Phillips from Downstream Exchange here. And this is the Commercial Real Estate Hour with Jesus Hanal, Leola Commercial on uh, 98.1 FM, 1220 KHTS. Now, what, what type of exchanges are there? Because we talked about, you said investment real estate, but we have homes, people buy homes and they homes, and then you have a retail center, you have triple nets, we talked about before, like the Jack in the Box Walgreens, and then you have industrial. What, what type of exchanges are there? Okay. Right now, there's been a change in the tax law, 2018. You can only exchange real property for real property. Okay. Now, what they mean by real property is anything under state law that's considered real property. So that would mean that you could exchange a single-family frame home for a duplex, a duplex for a triplex, triplex for a fourplex, fourplex for a six-unit apartment house, six-unit apartment house for a commercial building, six-unit apartment house or a commercial building uh, for an industrial building, uh, industrial building for raw land. So anything that's considered real property is exchangeable. Now, what you can exchange under federal law is, uh, for 2018, you can exchange tangible personal property. What tangible personal property is, it's like this desk or this microphone. It's stuff that you can touch, mm -hmm. but it's not considered real, real estate. Or you cannot exchange under current law, uh, uh, um, what's it called? Um, uh, intangible property. Intangible property is copyrights, trademarks, uh, goodwill, things of that nature. Now, that's under federal law. Currently, under state law, because the state hasn't conformed to the federal law just yet, uh, you can still exchange um, uh, tangible property and intangible property. However, uh, sometimes it's really not kind of worth it just for state tax, but it depends on the circumstance. Um, but the major thing you can exchange is real property for real property, real property in any form. Got it. Okay, perfect. So, you know, I could do my triplex, sixplex, whatever it is, 10 unit to an industrial building, a triple net, no problem at all. question you have to ask is, 
is the triplex real property? Uh, is the uh, uh, industrial building real property? The answer is yes, then and it is. Good. Like, I mean, kind of a funny circumstance. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there was a situation where um, somebody had uh, timber cutting rights in uh, Oregon, and um, timber cutting rights in Oregon are considered real property rights. So we actually exchanged, and I have a letter in my file from an attorney that says that, uh, we can actually, you can actually exchange timber cutting rights to real property in California. Wow. You know, but you're not going to run into that that often. Yeah, I'm not in the timber business at all. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, I know if I have, let's say, an example, I have that apartment building worth $5 million. I know I read something in the past where if I exchange that property, but I move out of California, and I say I go buy Arizona, or Nevada, I've heard that um, that the uh, the state government can come after you for some money if you don't complete that exchange or some of those proceeds from that exchange. Or how does that work? Okay, um, state of California, uh, they have a, a circumstance now that if you exchange from California real property to property in another state, you have to keep track of the income that you earned in the property from California and you have to file a form each year that says I still own this property if you don't file that form California will say well you owe us a tax on the property you earned in California because what people were doing was they were obviously uh, selling property in California and then moving out of the state mm -hmm. all right cutting all their ties with California and California kind of felt shortchanged that, uh, well, they made all these profits in California and then uh, they moved out of the state and we, we didn't get a chance to ch tax those profits. So that, that exists in the current law and uh, people who sell property in California, even if they don't move out of the state, still have to file this form that indicates that they still hold, own the property. That seems uh, pretty hard to keep track of all that. No, it's not. Uh, well, for California to say, hey, what happened to this property? I mean, that's all they do. They just said, you didn't file the form. We're going to tax you. Wow. Unbelievable. All right. We're going to take a break. We're up against uh, the break. Uh, once again, this is uh, Jesus Hanau of the Commercial Real Estate Hour in studio today, Tony Phillips. And we're going to continue on after the break, talking more 1031. Stay tuned. Santa Clarita Philharmonic has begun its season of free concerts. The SCP is a nonprofit community based volunteer symphony orchestra comprised of local musicians from throughout the Santa Clarita Valley who are dedicated to providing quality classical music for the residents of the Santa Clarita Valley. Like the Santa Clarita Philharmonic on Facebook or visit SantaClaritaPhilharmonic.org for more information. Your hometown station. KHTS is your official Santa Clarita Dodger station. You can catch all evening games right here on your hometown station. For all the latest news and updates on your Los Angeles Dodgers, KHCS has you covered. Go to hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Hey, all you savvy style seekers, extraordinary deals on designer brands await you at the outlets at Dajon. Find the latest fashion and accessories at Michael Kors, H&M, Levi's Outlet Store, Coach, and Calvin Klein. Shop for the whole family at Gap Outlet, American Eagle Outfitters, Oshkosh Bagosh, and Nike Factory Store. Even style your home with Pottery Barn Outlet and Le Creuset, all at amazing everyday value you won't find anywhere else. Join our VIP club today to receive your free coupon brochure filled with hundreds of dollars in additional savings. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or visit JahonOutlets.com for the latest sales and events. Your must shop stop is located just 40 minutes north on I-5. Find the best back-to-school looks at up to 65% off. Own the hallways in your favorite brands like Columbia, Calvin Klein, Nike Factory Store, Puma, Tommy Hilfiger, Hot Topic, and more. Visit TahoneOutlets.com for the latest deals on back-to-school fashion. 
Holy cow. It's fair time. Incredible food. Crazy carnival rides. Cool concerts presented by Palmdale Auto Mall, including country, rock and roll, and the sounds of the 80s. Rally Kia Arena events include Demo Derby, Monster Truck, and Figure A Racing. New this year, The Backyard. Enjoy craft beer, bocce ball, cornhole, and more. Get your tickets early. Pre-sale admission is just $7. Pre-sale season tickets are $15. And unlimited carnival ride wristbands are just $25. Details and ticket information at avfair.com. Santa Clarita Valley residents now have greater access to the excellent physicians and high quality medical services for which Providence Holy Cross is known. Providence Holy Cross Health Center in Santa Clarita features state-of-the-art cancer and imaging technologies as well as board certified physicians in a variety of medical specialties. Quality and compassion from a health care provider you can depend on. For more information call 1-888-HEALING or visit us at Providence.org. KHTS AM 1220 and the new 98.1 FM. Welcome back. This is the Commercial Real Estate Hour on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, uh, AM 1220 KHTS. I am your host, Jesus Hinao of Leola Commercial, and we have Tony Phillips of Downstream Exchange in studio. So, Tony, continuing on our, our conversation here, uh, let's talk a little bit how the process of the 1031. So I sold my building. My money is in the, is in the escrow. Can I pull that money out, or what, what happens after that? Well, what happens there is uh, prior to close of escrow, you should com- uh, uh, contact an accommodator. And that's Hold on a, a second. You mean contact Tony Phillips with Downstream Exchange? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, that should go without saying. Um, <laughs> well, another thing, too, before I, I continue on is you have to have a broker that knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. In my contracts, when we sell property, the 1031 language is there. So continue. Yes, oh, definitely. Uh, you really should establish uh, the fact that you want to do a 1031 exchange as soon as you possibly can, even so much as putting it into the, uh, um, you know, the offer agreement. Uh, and there's a form, uh, SES 11, that uh, has all the words that uh, uh, you should really always put in that form. Um, but a 1031 exchange, uh, or a delayed exchange, uh, what happens there is uh, prior to uh, the close of escrow, you should contact an accommodator, and um, the accommodator prepare, and the accommodator will call uh, escrow, obtain the escrow instructions and preliminary title report. And from that document, or those two documents, they will prepare uh, basically three agreements. Uh, The first agreement is the exchange agreement. That's the agreement between you and the accommodator. The second agreement is a uh, assignment of the escrow. Uh, And and in effect, what you're doing is, uh, by law, you have to assign your position in the escrow to the accommodator. And then the third agreement, of course, is the uh, escrow amendment to the escrow instructions which tells everybody what they should be doing. Um, once that occurs, uh, escrow closes, the funds are wired to the accommodator's account, not to your account. Hold on a second. So you're telling me I have to trust you with my money, my hard-earned $5 million out of the building I just sold? Um, yes. <laughs> and the thing that uh, surprises me is, uh, if you recall, uh, when I first started out the discussion uh, talking about uh, back in 1979, we had to explain, you know, uh, what what we were doing, who was doing what. Uh, you know, there were hour conversations for uh, each uh, phase of the exchange. Now, people just wire funds to after, of course, signing agreements, uh, just wire funds to our accounts. And and I remember one guy calling up and said, uh, uh, "Who are you guys?" And I says, "Well, <laughs> we're the most important guys in your life right now. We're holding on to your money." And, and, <laughs> It, it was just, you know, it it just gets so automatic now. Uh, obviously, I mean, uh, and if you kind of think about it, there's no licenses that we have to get. A cosmetologist has to get a license. Uh, an don't say that too loud now. I don't want the state to hear that. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> that it, means it, that it, means it, we're going to have to pay more money for well, a license. No, actually, uh, <laughs> what, what's happened in uh, at least in the state of Nevada, um, they have a licensing scheme. But uh, they didn't fund it. So, I mean, I remember I got my license. My office manager got her license. 
And now my son has been trying to get his license, and uh, he just can't do it because they don't have a regulatory uh, uh, administration of this. But anyhow, to get back to the exchange. Uh, funds are wired to the accommodator's account. Then what has to happen is the exchanger, the person doing the exchange, has to identify a new piece of property that they want to acquire within 45 days. Now, you want 45 days to pass real quick, get into an exchange. But <laughs> they have to uh, uh, identify within 45 days, and it has to be unambiguous. It can't be it's one of those, uh, one of those condos. It has to be specifically it's condo, uh, you know, 247 or something like that. It's in Santa Clarita. <laughs> yeah, or in Santa Clarita. I mean, no, you can't, no, you can't do that. Uh, because, you know, what the, obviously the exchanger wants to do is, uh, you know, kind of drag in the, um, uh, 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 what's it called, you know, uh, uh, county records and say it's one of those. But yeah. they, they can't do that. So, and, and then the, and then, uh, the exchanger has to acquire within 180 days uh, one of the property that the, they've identified within the 45 days. Now, so is it how many properties do they have to identify? Well, they can identify up to three properties. Three properties. Uh, no con no uh, relationship to their fair market value. And uh, can I switch them out within those 45 days? Can I say, I like these three, but say on the 40th day, a hot deal comes on and I want to say, no, I want this one. Can I put that in, in the... You can identify and, and, and identify a new piece of property within the 45 days. Is that done through email or is a form? How does that work? We provide a form to the exchanger, uh, and we'd like them to uh, indic indicate on that form. Uh, we time stamp it when it comes in because, obviously, the, the, the biggest thing, of course, would be to fudge on the uh, uh, 45 days because that's an easy you know, kind of fudge. Uh, w we don't do that. Uh, we, we play by the rules. And uh, we've had, uh, of course, circumstances where the exchanger can identify within the 45 days, and you know it's just a misfortune. But a million people, dollar misfortune on the five million dollar example. Oh, exactly. Because <laughs> uh, if they've not identified, uh, we write them a check and they get taxed. That's the penalty. Uh, now the, the exchange has to be completed within 180 days, and that's fairly easy to determine. Uh, you know, you have a change in title and things like that. Um, Let's see. Uh, One yeah, thing. Sorry, yeah, we got the, the numbers. Okay. One thing I want to add on that <clears throat> that's important. Uh, on those 45 days, you're right. That's the fastest time for anybody that's doing an exchange. Uh, one things that one thing that I do in my in my dealings with in doing this 24 years and selling real estate is what we do is uh, in an escrow when we're in escrow and we uh, the seller knows he's exchanging. What we do um, we put uh, extensions in the escrow, meaning. Uh, we go non-contingent. What that means is he's he's already approved the books and records, the physical inspection, uh, the finance is done. There's no way for him to go back, or he's going to lose his deposit. Once we cross that threshold, we put extensions in escrow. So once his money, the money is hard from the buyer, we immediately go out and identify properties. I'm scouring the market. I'm talking to everybody. We're putting email blasts out. We're contacting every owner out there to find a, a replacement property for the uh, for the uh, for the seller. And at that point, when we close escrow or say escrow's up and we haven't found a property, we extend the escrow another 30 days. And then we put another extension, ex extend another 30 days. So he has a total of 60 days to find the property. In addition to that, then he has the other 45 days once he closes escrow. But m in most cases, in my experience is after the first 30 day extension, we've already found a property that he's going to buy. We were, we're in escrow. We put money. We've walked it. So by the time it gets to you, we're... 90% sure we're going to close. And the other two, three buildings that we have or the other two buildings in the, in the list are backups just mm -hmm. to protect you against that because nobody wants to pay that million-dollar uh, tax hit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But then once the property has been uh, identified and uh, we're getting down to the close, uh, escrow, we call up escrow, obtain the escrow instructions and preliminary title report on a replacement property, and we prepare basically two sets of documents. One first document is uh, assignment of the escrow uh, to the accommodator and also uh, an amendment to the escrow telling everybody what they should be doing. Uh, once uh, escrow calls for the funds, we wire the funds uh, to escrow and uh, uh, the property closes. Uh, if you kind of think about it, uh, uh, the accommodator just really facilitates uh, the exchange 
And the principal uh, reason that the accommodator exists is to hold the proceeds from the exchange beyond the actual or constructive use of the client. That, that's, yeah. what, that's what basically the, what the accommodator is trying to do. And if you kind of think about it, uh, one of the requirements of a, an exchange is that there be actual reciprocal transfer of a deed for a deed. And mm -hmm. what the accommodator does is he, they facilitate that part of the transaction. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Now, <clears throat> what safeguards are there? And with your, with the, your experience, has there any been a, 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 a time where the money's with the accommodator, you know, uh, the, the world stops, economy hits the floor, and has anybody lost their money? Or what are the safeguards against that? Uh, the biggest one was uh, $490 million. Uh, and uh, uh, It wasn't me, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't us either, um, and uh, that was a that was a big deal. There was lots of difficulty in that. Uh, it was uh, fairly large, obviously, uh, uh, proceeds. Um, what we have been in business for thirty nine years, uh, we've never missed a, a wire. Uh, we are uh, conservative with uh, uh, the funds. Uh, we are very safe with the funds. Um, if you kind of think about it, I mean, the accommodator's job is to protect the client's money, and that's it. And uh, we've been successful for that for, uh, you know, as I say, 39 years. Uh, there's bonding, as you can get, and we have bonding. Um, but uh, no matter how much bonding, and some uh, accommodators, we were later found out that they were self-bonding, uh, uh, yeah, self-bonding. Um, so um, you, you got to be careful. I mean, you got to deal with somebody you trust, somebody who's been in the business uh, a while. Uh, somebody has the qualifications to, you know, keep up with the changing tax law and, you know, changing circumstances. Got it. Perfect. Once again, this is the Commercial Real Estate Hour. Jesus Hanau of Leola Commercial, and I have Tony Phillips in studio today. Um, what do you do with the money when it's in? It just sits in your bank account? Is there some interest? What happens with that? Um, basically, uh, especially under you know current situations, interest rate is you know minuscule, uh, you know point zero zero five percent in some circumstances. Uh, we basically keep it in uh, uh, the most secure accounts we can figure out, and uh, uh, to us uh, the five thousand dollars. No, actually, we don't do that. Uh, the fifty thousand uh, dollars of the accommodator's money, excuse me, of the uh, client's money, is as important as the you know five million dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. So we treat it uh, with a great deal of respect and a great deal of care. And that's why we have him in here because I totally trust uh, Tony. He's he's been amazing, uh, and I, all my clients I recommend to him uh, when they come to a ten thirty one exchange. So let, let let's uh, continue on with this conversation and. What is a reverse exchange? I've heard that word being thrown around. What is that? There's a straight exchange and there's a reverse exchange. What does that mean? A delayed exchange is you close and acquire the property within 180 days. A reverse exchange is you buy your property first. Oh, okay. Okay. And under current uh, situations, it's sometimes it's very difficult uh, to uh, find a piece of property. So what people are doing is they're seeking the purchase of the replacement property first, and then within 180 days selling their relinquished property. So it. It, it's in reverse, in effect. And uh, I remember uh, we were doing reverse exchanges uh, since its inception, um, but uh, you know just fairly recently, maybe in 2002 or so, uh, there is. Uh, 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 sanctions now that you can do a reverse exchange and uh, there's quite a you know uh, uh, body of law that allows you to do it uh, the unfortunate thing about reverse exchanges is there's a number of ways of doing it depending on the circumstances and it's really incumbent upon the accommodator uh, to figure out you know which is the best way of doing it uh, uh, how to do it when to do it uh, whether banks involved or self-funded or self-financed uh, there, there's just a myriad of, uh, you know, kind of complex decisions that have to be uh, decided upon. 
uh, before you enter into the exchange. Mm -hmm. So just to understand that if I do a reverse exchange, instead of a 45-day to identify, that's gone. I just have to uh, sell my property within the 180 days to complete it. Correct. Oh, got it. Perfect. Okay. What about a, a, a built to suit? What if I uh, I'm in the I'm a I'm a dentist. I've had my practice. I've grown the business. I've grown out of the building. I'm le I owned a small property that was my office. Now I find this excellent piece of real estate, and I want to build my property. What what happens then? How can I exchange? How does that work? All right. What a build to suit exchange does is and it's it really functions well uh, when you're trying to repair a piece of property. Let's assume you buy a piece of property for a million dollars, and it has uh, two hundred thousand dollars worth of repairs, and you have a million two hundred thousand uh, dollars worth of exchange funds to uh, to spend. Uh, you can actually have the accommodator acquire the property for a million dollars and hold on to it, and within 180 days, they would put the other two hundred thousand into the additional 200000 into the repair or um, uh, uh, modification of the building and then deed the now million two property over to the exchanger. That's what happens. Got it. Got it. Now, interesting enough, so let's say I – and we haven't talked about this. It's, it's another – it's a little bit different on how not to pay or to defer – the tax is I own a $5 million property and I say, I'm just going to refinance it and pull the money out. Do I pay tax on that? No. Interesting enough. Uh, refinancings are not uh, taxable events. Uh, depends on, you know, entities and things like that. But, you know, basically, no, nope, just take the money and throw it into the wind if you want. No, we don't want to do that. We want to call, you want to call Jesus at Leola Commercial, and we're going to find you another property <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to buy and then let that appreciate and, and hit some, some tax shelter, et cetera. Now, what is, the, what is the most complex 1031 exchange that you've been a part of? Because it seems pretty easy. 45 days, identify three properties, 180 days to close. You have the, you have the right broker on the, on, the, uh, on the team. You have the right accommodator. What is the most complex that you've seen? I've participated in multiple complex circumstances where, you know, you work real hard to make the deal. That's the thing. But the one that kind of comes to mind is um, we had to buy a, a property, and um, it, was out, it was inside a partnership. And basically what we did was, we acquired a leasehold interest in the uh, from the partnership, and uh, the leasehold interest was more than 30 years, but less than 35 years. So we picked 32 years. Now, the reason for all this is a leasehold interest that more than 30 years is considered real property. Remember wow. we talked about yeah. you know, what's considered real property? Well, a leasehold interest uh, in a piece of property is considered real property. But um, a change in, uh, a, a, a change in um, assessed valuation occurs when you have a leasehold interest more than 35 years. So we got into that exact amount, uh, exact situation, and uh, acquired uh, this leasehold interest. And it was just, I mean, I remember going to uh, the lawyers, and I also remember going to uh, the uh, other partners in the transaction, and they were talking about, oh, this is impossible. You can't do this. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. I, we've never figured out this. And I says, well, look, here's what we're going to do. And it was kind of fun to look around the table and realize, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. You know? It's kind of like USC winning in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Feeling is amazing. Once again, uh, everybody, we're uh, coming up on uh, on our end of our segment here. Uh, we have Tony Phillips with Downstream Exchange. Please uh, check him out on the website www.downstreamexchange, or you can call him at his Pasadena office six two six seven nine six. What else? 
1031. <laughs> and I, Tony, thank you so much for coming in, taking your time to come out here. I know that our listeners really got a pretty good understanding of 1031. There's a lot more, obviously. But uh, if you are thinking about exchanging, you know where to call. If you have a property you want to relinquish, give me a call. And once again, thank you again for taking time out. I truly appreciate it. And uh, thank you. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll be doing business with you soon. Thank you. Comfort Keepers provide your loved one with loving in-home care. Miles McNamara, certified senior advisor and owner of Comfort Keepers in-home care. Our caregivers can help you in your own home, enhancing independence, creating safety and comfort. Our Comfort Keepers provide companionship, meal preparation, medication reminders, assistance with personal care, and even transportation to doctor's appointments. If someone you love can use a helping hand at home, visit ComfortKeepers.com. Or call 287-4200. Hometown. If you see a traffic problem in our valley and would like to let us know, call the traffic tip line at 298-KHTS. That's 298-5487. 298-KHTS. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Patty Handy, host of Starting Over with Patty Handy, has written several books that speak to her audience. Money Rules 101. Master Your Money Before It Masters You is designed for anyone seeking financial peace of mind for themselves as a parent or their young adult children. In an entertaining and highly readable approach, Patty covers many topics, including the money mindset, debit and credit cards, understanding credit scores, entrepreneurship, spending wisely, secrets of savings, investing, buying a home, and most importantly, giving back. A must read for anyone. Satisfy your sweet tooth with a bite of sweet perfection from Nothing Bunt Cakes in Valencia. Their decadent cakes are ideal for your next birthday, anniversary, baby shower, wedding, holiday party, and more. Nothing Bunt Cakes makes their treats readily available without compromising quality. You can expect real butter and cream cheese, fresh eggs, and lots of love in each of their 10 luscious flavors. To order your own sweet treat, visit their Valencia Bakery in the Whole Foods Shopping Center or log on to nothingbuntcakes.com. The Santa Clarita Artists Association has a new gallery in downtown Newhall on 6th Street between Main and Railroad, right across from the Canyon Theater Guild. The gallery features our members' paintings, sculptures, and one-of-a-kind handcrafted gift items. Whether you're an art lover, buyer, or an artist wishing to join, visit our website at santaclaritaartist.org, come to our free monthly meetings at Barnes & Noble, or stop by the gallery. For upcoming events and exhibits, check us out at santaclaritaartist.org. We make visual art visible. KHTS AM 1220 and the new 98.1 FM. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Commercial Real Estate Hour. Here we're just going to wrap up our time. Boy, that went fast. Um, and your hometown station, 98.1, 1220 KHTS. This is your host, Jesus now and we have uh, Tony Phillips still in. We're gonna, uh, yeah, I'd like to wrap uh, the uh, the segment today. Just uh, asking Tony, what advice do you have for that young guy just finishing up college, uh, looking to make some moves, wants to get ahead in life? I always tell him, real estate is the way to is the way to go. Um, what advice do you have for a guy coming out of college? He's just got his accounting degree or. You know, business degree, what would you, uh, what advice you got for him? Well, the thing to do is to look at how you're going to end your life. You know, forget about how you're starting. How are you going to end? And you're going to look at what, what the biggest asset that most people have at the, when they're retiring, is their home. The next biggest asset is the real estate that they have. So you say, okay, here's where I'm going to be at the end of my life. How do I get how do I get started and get involved in real estate? Because uh, if you I mean however you get involved, uh, you got to get involved and look at what you are at the end of your life. That, that's just that's simple. Now there are other ways of uh, you know kind of uh, succeeding. Like um, um, most people come to my office and say I want to make as much money as I can, but I don't want to pay any tax. That's, that's standard thing, okay? Standard, standard situation. Well, you look at that and you say, well, wait a minute. There's only really three different ways of doing that. The first one is, let's say, you get involved in the stock market, and 
and let's uh, say you have no uh, real estate acumen, but you have stock market acumen. Uh, you get involved in the stock market, and unless you're a day trader, you're not taking your gains on a daily basis. Uh, you notice that your portfolio will increase little by little. And if you look at the trajectory of the stock market, you know, it's basically up. You know, it has, you know, bumps and, you know, significant corrections, uh, but, you know, basically it's, it's up. Uh, the second thing is uh, get involved in uh, um, uh, pension pan plans as best as you can. Uh, again, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, accumulation of capital over a period of time, and it's you know it can be steady, you know seven hundred and fifty dollars a month, uh, steady accumulation of capital. Uh, it's amazing how that mounts up, and also you know the magic of uh, compound interest, and. Um, but the third thing, of course, is real estate, and uh, real estate in all forms, uh, whether you're operating your business from mm -hmm. it, whether you're owning it as a, your principal residence, uh, real estate uh, over the period of years has been nothing but good for everybody. Exactly. So one thing I'd recommend uh, also is uh, continue on with, with what you said is I tell a lot of people this, that they come to me and ask me about real estate. I tell them save as much money as you can. Nowadays, kids are staying with their parents a long, long time, you know, until they get married. Save every dollar you can. Do not go out and buy the Tesla. Do not go buy the Porsche. Live below your means. Save up those dollars so you can accumulate, maybe, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand. 20000 That's your seed money to buy the condo we talked about, the duplex, the triplex. You get into that. Now you're in the business. Now you're in there. But what happens is, and, I, and, and uh, what I see it all too often is, kids come out, they want to live the, uh, the rock star life, lifestyle. They like the, the videos of the guy with the gold chain, and uh, they're driving the, the Mercedes Benz and the Bentley and all that, and they think that's what it is. But, you know, those people are less than a percent of the wealth holders, I, I, I would assume. So you have to put in the work now. And the most important thing you said today is great. Have the end in mind. Make those goals. If you don't have your goals, you don't know where you're going. It's like a ship without a rudder. And I always give this I always bring this out with people when they ask me that. I have it here in my pocket. <clears throat> These are my 2018 goals. For the last 20 years, I've been writing my goals at the end of the year every year. And I write them down so I know where I'm headed. I know where I'm going, and I'm checking off. I, I had the opportunity when I was in Peru to check off the list, family trip to Peru, <laughs> crossed it out. <laughs> I brought it out at lunchtime. I was at dinner with my family, and I, was, I have a 13- and a 14-year-old girl and a 21-year-old boy, and I told them, look how important this is. I broke out the paper. I opened it up. I read the goals to them, and I said, look what we're crossing off today, and I crossed it out in front of them. This is the most important thing. So simple, but nobody does it. And it goes back to exactly what you said. Have the end goal in mind and work your way back. So that's great advice. And go to college. Obviously, I think today now a bachelor's degree doesn't cut it. You need to get a master's degree, whatever it is, law, accounting, you name it. That's very important. Would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. I mean, you've know, got to get an education. Uh, that's the primary thing, and sometimes that kind of kind of hurts you a little bit because you know student loans and things like that. But you know, I mean, the best thing you can have is getting an education, and then having an education uh, really sets you up for um, uh, success. Yeah. Interesting, you said about just to wrap up, you can still get a quality education without breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. My son goes to UVU in Utah, and the tuition there is four thousand a year. For a good school, uh, it's next to BYU. Uh, it has more students at BYU. Solid education. It's great. So that should not be an excuse why you can't go to college. So get that out of the way. Once again, thank you again, Tony, for coming in. That's our advice for you young bucks out there and young ladies trying to get, uh, you know, get ahead of the game. This is Jesus Hanal, Leola Commercial, The Real Estate Hour, and we'll see you next week. Take care.